I've developed a, a really big crush on a coworker. I feel like I'm back in high school, and it's uh, <laughs> I've been happily married for almost four years. My marriage is great, and I don't know why all of a sudden this has come up, but it has. Are you ready just to buckle up? Because I got a lot of thoughts. It's that time again. It's the Dr. John Deloney Show. I'm John. So glad that you're with us. Talking about mental health and marriage and parenting and falling apart. What in the world? I hope you're doing well. If you want to be on the show, give me a buzz. 1-844-693-3291. It's 1-844-693-3291. And we will rock on till the break of dawn. Let's go to Brandon in Phoenix. What's up, Brandon? Hi, John. How are you? Remarkable. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for taking my call. You got it, man. What's up? Uh, so, kind of a, a weird situation. Um, my wife and I recently moved uh, here to Phoenix a few months ago. I started a brand new job. Um, totally new city, new state, all of that. Um, and over the past uh, month, month and a half or so, uh, I've developed a, a really big crush on a coworker and I feel like, oh, I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in high school and it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a very weird feeling. Uh, I've been happily married for almost four years and, uh, my marriage is great and I don't know why all of a sudden this has come up, but it has, and I'm not sure how to navigate that. Hmm. Okay, so are you ready just to buckle up? Because I got a lot of thoughts. Okay. Here's your job. Your job is to interrupt me at any point, okay? Okay. Is that cool? That's so cool. I'm going to rock and roll. You tell me you're wrong. Hold on and just yell, throw a flag, or if you have like one of those shut up buttons, just push it, okay? So Sounds good. Four years in, y'all have started to settle in. And then you took a new job. Y'all moved to a new town. It was exciting and scary. And y'all had to leave friends or family or whatever. And you landed here. Okay. And your wife is probably settled into, you're developing a routine. You're starting to talk about what house one day and maybe having kids or not going to have kids and all that stuff. And you're slowly, slowly, tiny, slowly feeling the old adventurous, yeah, dude, Brandon, slowly starting to suffocate a little bit. And the humanity of your wife is real. She's got boogers and she farts and she's like, doesn't wear makeup all the time, like all that stuff. And then you start this new job in this new town and somebody makes your heart start beating a little faster again. And maybe her body's a little bit better than your wife's or a little bit different. I don't say better than, but it's more your jam or maybe there's something in the way she touches your arm or she laughs or she listens to the same music as you. There's a little thing that slowly makes you feel like, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this guy, the way he used to feel around girls like her. And you even said it, uh, you feel like a high schooler again. You know, it was in high school for some yeah. of us like me. I loved it. I love the awkwardness. <laughs> I love wondering if she liked me. I wondered, I loved when she broke up with me. I mean, I hated it at the time, but in retrospect, I loved, my wife hated it. I loved it, dude. And so, let me make this super clear to you, okay? This is not hey. about her. Nothing to do with her. This is about you. And yeah. I want to I free you from something. Being attracted to people, thinking people are awesome, wondering what if. I would even go as far as to say as having like a crush on someone. Like, I just like spending time with it. That's the rest of your life, dude. And I, I'm not, I, I think anybody who beats you up over that is an idiot, okay? Um, okay. But yeah, let me say this, but you're always going to find people that are sexy or beautiful, hilarious, fun. I, I had one friend tell me, um, he ended up leaving his wife. Right. So, and we'll get to that in a second, but he said something. I just like the way she moves. And there was a sensuality to way this, this person he worked with, the way she just moved through the world. Right. It wasn't even this particular, I'm overwhelmed by how beautiful she is or whatever, whatever. So whatever that is, you land on two choices, okay? You ready? Choice ready. number one, I am going to scratch and fight and claw 
my way back to feeling alive inside the marriage that I committed my life to. And we'll talk about that in a second, how you do that. But we're going to create a world where I feel alive, where I'm daily leaning into my wife, where I tell her the truth, where I tell her what I would love to try in the bedroom, what I would like to stop doing, like when it comes to holiday plans, all that stuff. I'm going to start telling her the truth because I haven't really been. I've been hoping she was a mind reader and kind of leaning in a little bit and hoping she would pretend and kind of trying to position her this way. But I haven't said anything because I'm kind of dishonest and kind of a coward a little bit. And I'm going to allow her to say the same thing too. I'm going to respect her boundaries. So I'm going to stop there before I get to number two. Am I off by in, at, on any of this? No, uh, actually, <laughs> just kind of describing the situation, you, you you pretty much nailed it on the head. And 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 I I want to clarify, yeah, like I'm I'm in a great marriage. I I love my wife, uh, but yeah, I, I think I don't know, just something about starting in this new place, and uh, and I, and I don't even have that that close of a relationship with this coworker. It's it literally just being friends at work. But uh yeah, she she's this coworker definitely has me feeling some of those things. So Okay. I think I think you're right on. So that leads me to number two. Okay. You're gonna respect the fact that you stood up in front of your friends and your family, and if you're a person of faith, in front of God, and you stood before her, your wife And you said, come what comes, I will be right here. Yeah. What that means is when you have crushes and want to hang out more and want to have a little side text conversation with somebody, I have been there across the board on all of those things, dude. And I've accidentally, through private jokes and thinking this is funny, found myself staring over an abyss with no intention. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank God I've never done anything irreversible, but I'm telling you, it's just so innocuous. And my whole life was about flirty energy. That's how I entered a room. And I'm telling you right now, it's it's been an off switch. Now I enter a room with peace and I don't want anything from any of the people because what I realized I was using people to make myself feel better. Okay. So the earlier you can say, yeah, she's beautiful. That's, that, that's, she's hilarious and I'd like to there it is that's when you got a choice I don't text mm-hmm. I just don't I don't text women I'm not married to I don't go get drinks with fill in the blank anymore I don't do this anymore I make sure I sit over here because I told my wife right. and it's gonna feel like um I mean, gosh, now you're going to get me all soapboxed out. We just live in a culture that says like your feelings are the most important thing. And I reject that with all of my heart. Because you have the same yeah. feelings that point out how much, how pretty she is and how funny she is or whatever that you're finding attractive about her. Those same feelings pointed you towards your wife. Like feelings are feelings. And then you made a choice, right? And so action, I think, is really critical here. Um, okay. <sighs> What are you going to do? Well, I, I, I have been meaning to really talk about it with my wife. Uh, I'm a little nervous as to how she'll react. Why, wh- uh, what would that bring you? Um, well, I mean, I, I think for me it would bring me peace. But, yeah, I'm, I am a little anxious as to what she'll, have you done what any- she'll think. Have so. you done anything wrong? No. What is, man, now I'm going to get myself in some dangerous territory. What I've found with younger millennials is, uh, and it's, it's a real, and I say that not in a disparaging way. I just don't see it in other, other generational groups is a need to over, overshare an almost weaponized transparency. What I mean by mm-hmm. that is, um, I tell people all the time, you can't keep secrets like you got to be honest with your spouse. You got to tell them what you're, what's going on. You got to tell them like all, all that's good. And I'm finding people who are 22, 23, 25, 26 walking down the mall and looking over at their husband and being like, man, I'd like to sleep with that guy. And it's like, that's super not helpful, right? 
There's a point when it's it, – so that's what I'm asking you. What, what about this situation? You're at a new job in a new town in a new place. Maybe you didn't want to take this new job. Maybe this is mostly the house that your wife picked. Maybe you're starting to settle in and say, oh my gosh, this is the rest of my life and I don't like who I'm becoming. And then I see her. What makes you say, I need to go tell my wife that I found somebody else attractive? Well, I uh, I don't know. I, I think it's just wanting to be transparent with my wife. Uh, you know, I've always been. And um, I, yeah, I guess I'm just afraid of maybe, you know, triggering some anxiety, some jealousy in, in her. Um, Will you ever cheat on your wife? In our marriage. Sorry? Will you ever cheat on your wife? No. Okay. If I was you, I would probably, I would consider a couple of things. One, yes. If, I mean, you know your marriage better than me. If you, if sitting down saying, I need you to know that I have feelings for somebody at work and I don't even hear you saying you have feelings for somebody. I have you, I feel like you're telling, or I hear you telling me I'm kind of caught off guard because I've kind of got a crush on somebody, which is different than I, I really am trying to figure out ways to spend more time with somebody. I really want somebody else. Does that make sense? And it sounds like I'm being, I'm dancing a fine line here, but if tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, let, let me give you this picture. Esther Perel paints and I love it. You spend all of your dating time practicing safety. Is she going to show up? Right. Is he going to answer the phone? If somebody tries to like get me in a bar, is he going to stand up for me? Like we're practicing safety. And you're led all with desire. Can't wait to be together. You blow off tests. You skip work. You're making out in the middle of dinner. I, right? I mean, it's, it's all about desire. Then when you begin to establish safety, it's very difficult for desire to remain in the presence of safety. Right. When, that's, uh, that's that settling in. And what we don't have in our culture, we do have the practice safety. You'll hear your friends being like, hey, do you, does, does he call you back? Does, did she listen to you when you were telling her that you were sad? Like, we have those conversations. We don't have the other conversations, which are, how do I create a world where we're both fully alive and there's mystery and romance and all-day text exchanges that lead into firework shows, right? And right. you see what I'm saying? So- I think the best way to start this conversation is we just started a whole new life in a new town with a new job. And I find myself on a trajectory where I don't like who I'm becoming. And my guess is it's not just related to this person at work that you feel like a high schooler around. My guess is you're probably also avoiding X, not helping around the house a little bit, maybe taking one more drink than you normally do or eating one more taco than you normally do. Am I wrong on any of those? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm, uh, I, I've actually been really trying to work on myself better, just hitting the gym more and, and things like that. Um, and right there's the but, challenge. Can I tell you that? I know that I know I'm going yeah. against everything that you're going to see on Instagram for the next five months. I know that <laughs> when y'all lock into a new town and a new place and a new adventure and a new part of your life, you each going your separate ways to quote unquote work on yourselves can actually pull y'all further apart. You may end up spending more time in the gym, but the only way this thing works long-term is if y'all decide we're doubling down on who we're going to be together. Right. And so your whole life is different and y'all probably have not called that out yet. Your old marriage is over. Your old college time is over. Your old high school time is over. You're in a new town, in a new state, in a new job, in a new whatever. And so you all have to acknowledge we're building a new world. And right. part of our new world is we take care of ourselves. Cool. I need to go to the gym. You see, what I'm, you see how different that is than I've been working on myself, listening to podcasts, going to the gym, um, do it, like journaling more. All of those things are isolating you further and further and further from the person that you're supposed to be building a life with. Okay, yeah. And you may end up doing those same things. I hope I don't sound crazy. You may end up doing those same exact things. But they're going to be in service to your marriage, not in service to you just getting better so you can crush and kill. And I'm, I'm becoming more and more outspoken. I think we've just missed it as a culture. 
Um, Brandon, I'm not, I'm not picking on you now. Now I'm just talking to everybody. Somewhere along the way, we begin telling people, you shouldn't be married. You shouldn't get in relationships until you're all you. And if you're struggling with like a mental health disorder or you've got some major personality challenges, yes, you need to go make sure you're well. Or if you're codependent, marrying somebody so that you can be okay is never healthy. But this idea that I've got to go be a Spartan and you've got to be a Spartan so that we can then get married is madness. You got to do that stuff together in service of one another. I'm not going to crush it and kill it in my 20s so I can crush it and kill it in my, so I can have crushed it and kill it in my 20s. I'm going to crush it and kill it in my 20s because me and my wife have a vision of what our family tree is going to look like when the dust settles on our life. And I'm willing to put all that work in. I'm willing to do this and X and Y and sacrifice on behalf of my wife and my kids and my community and my country and my wife is I'm, I'm willing to put this aside and this aside and it goes right in the face of you follow your dreams and you follow your dreams. When somebody tells me these words, it's, it's the new magic words. Um, our marriage just ran its course. Bull crap. I call BS. I call BS. One of you quit or what both of you quit or one of you did something that the other person said, I can no longer be a part of this. But the idea that a relationship just naturally runs out of gas is false. People make life changes. People move. People make decisions about how they're going to invest in themselves and other people and in, more importantly, in the total relationship. So, Brandon, I tell you all I have to tell you. I love you. You're not crazy. I don't think you're a bad guy. I don't think you need to walk in your front door and be like, I am. I, I, don't, I, I don't hear that. Okay. I also, you, you, if you listen to the show for five seconds, you know I'm really anti-secrets, right? It may be that when you tell your wife, hey, I'm even finding myself like having crushes on people at work. Like I, I, I'm worried about, um, I'm worried about my trajectory and I want to create a world where we desire one another. Um, and we practice desire on a regular basis. Uh, I want you to know you're not crazy. I've been there. I don't know actually uh, anybody that hasn't been there, male or female, quite honestly. Question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to do what the culture says and follow your feelings? And they're going to lead you right off a cliff. Or are you going to remember, I made a covenant. I said, till death do us part. All my things are your things and all your things are my things. And I'll spend the rest of my life making sure your life is well. And I hope you'll do the same for me. I think you should choose option two, but that's just me. We'll be right back. I've got a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Listen, I've been on both ends of therapy in my life. I've gotten it myself and I've walked people through it. And I've seen the benefits from both sides when someone owns their past and the cracks in their armor. But here's the deal. Getting to know yourself is not a one-time event. Acknowledging the stories that make you who you are can be a lifelong process. And talking through things with the right sounding board empowers you to change your future and be the best version of yourself. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, I recommend BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can walk with you on that journey of self-discovery. And it's 100% online, and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and work for your schedule. Just fill out a quick questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if it's not the right fit, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Deloney today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Deloney. All right, let's go to Parker in Memphis, Tennessee. What's up, Parker? John freaking Deloney. Parker freaking Parker. What's up, dude? I don't I know if your last name I'm is Parker. To the best. Is your is your last name Parker too? Please say yes. Ever. Yes, this is the best part. Okay, <laughs> hold on, dude. I keep interrupting you. What'd you say? I said I can't believe I'm talking to the best mental health expert on the best mental health podcast ever. Yes. Okay. So, real quick clarification: I'm not even close to the best mental health professional, but this is the best <laughs> show, right? I'm not even the top 200, dude. Not top 2,000. I'm not very well, good. Top 200. Come on, man. Give yourself some credit. You know? But we got a dope podcast. All right. Make sure you talk uh, directly into your phone. Um, okay. So what's up? Life all right? Yeah, life is good. I practiced that intro like 20 times and apparently my phone cut out. So that's cool. All right. Do it again. 
Well, and, hey, listen. I can't believe I'm talking to the greatest mental health expert on the greatest mental health podcast ever. Dude. <laughs> so we established this earlier, but I'll say it again. Um, I, I'm not really good at being the, uh, a mental health expert. I'm not very good, but this is the greatest <laughs> show of all time ever. You didn't nail that one. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, so what's up, Parker? How can I help? Hey, real quick. What belts are you in jiu-jitsu? Oh, dude. I was trained by a guy who did all his training in Japan. And then my other coach was from mainland China. Both of them believed that belts were for American kids to feel good about themselves and to pay. So anyway, they had a whole thing against belts. So no belts for me, dude. Oh, okay. Now I've never heard that before. That's awesome. Well, I mean, it would be really cool if I had a belt hanging from, but I would have been not very far along. <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. Cool. But in my heart, Super black belt, dude. No, a hundred percent, man. Yes. So what's up? Okay. So my question is, man, um, did I set my son up for a life of anxiety? Yes. Um, I'll give you a backstory. Okay. Um, when I was about you know, 11 or 12, I had like these big, big dreams of being like, uh, in the UFC doing MMA and all that stuff. And, um, if I start rambling, just let me know and just interrupt me. Have but you ever have you ever listened I, to this show before? <laughs> I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I ramble I'm a, a lot. I'm a natural rambler too. So there you go. You're in good company. All right, go for it. All right. So like all my life, I had these dreams of being this uh, the next Conor McGregor or Michael Chandler or something like that. And um, to be honest, I I've done martial arts my whole life, and um, I started to get distracted. I had a I got a wife, uh, I got married, and I had a kid. And when I had my first kid, I was like, I didn't really try hard enough to do this MMA thing. So I'm going to try it. And so I accumulated a record of like three and two, which is not, you know, not amazing, but it's, uh, I had potential. And then I got my, I, then I had a second kid. And um, around that time, I decided I was like, uh, I don't think I need to get, get punched in the face all the time and I get paid for it. So I decided to quit the, quit the, you know, pursuit of MMA. and. When that happened, I, I started, I felt this hole in my heart where martial arts had been my whole life. And so I started, feel, started filling that with alcohol. Mm. And it was kind of like a, kind of a slow start. It was, you know, one, two drinks here or there. And then it turned into every weekend. And then it turned into like every time, every, you know, every time I was awake, I was either buzzed or I had anxiety. And, um, my now five-year-old, he was, you know, he was in for all of that. And so I became, you know, very, I became like a ticking time bomb. I was, um, just always yelling, always screaming. I was kind of just like you said in your book, radioactive. And, um, at the beginning of 2022, I decided to really, you know, get control of my life back. Um, I lost about 40 pounds. I stopped drinking. And, um, really started, you know, working on myself so that I can be better for my family. And then a couple of days ago, I was on, I was on TikTok and, uh, I saw this Mel Robbins interview that with a neuroscientist that said, um, 80% of your, um, 80% of your childhood development starts at like between zero and five years old. And man, I almost dropped my phone. Cause I was like, I was such a such a hothead such a such a radioactive person between his zero and five hmm. and so my question to you is did i set him up for a life of anxiety and if i did what can i do to you know help him navigate through his life yeah dude, that's a great question man thanks for telling that story i wasn't rambling at all i was uh, i was really good man um okay cool and we track a lot um some of my story is very similar I got into the reason I got into mixed martial arts initially was because I ran my mouth so much. And I always found myself every time I went out with my buddies, every time I played a pickup basketball game, and I had friends that were nuts and they loved fighting. And so I found myself a disconnect between how much I ran my mouth and what I knew deep down I was not capable of doing. And so <laughs> I went. I began my journey there really um, to 
wallpaper over a very insecure little boy that had now suddenly found himself inside of a man's body. Mm -hmm. And my dreams, I never dreamed of being professional. I was never, that was never the thing. I liked going to the gym every night with, I think at one point the state kickboxing heavyweight champion was there. The light heavyweight champion was there. Some, just some killers, man. And then when the China won the Olympics and they started running through sand shoe fighters, it was, I mean, some of the craziest athletes in the world and it was awesome. And I felt myself transition from this scared little boy who was trying to bow up and show everybody, oh, yeah, yeah, to um, the most peaceful, calm guy I could possibly be. And so I'm, I, I'm a firm believer. My, my kids are getting involved in it soon. Like I'm a firm believer in martial arts over the long haul because I think it takes some of that nonsense out of you. So the of first course, thing yeah. I would ask you is, this is a private conversation for you and yourself. Was any of that dream, any of that lifelong journey in mixed martial arts and martial arts, was any of that a way to run from something you thought you were not? It might not be, but I think that's- No, it I, wasn't. It wasn't? Okay. Um, that's where I would start because that, 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 that was for me. I, I, here's, the, uh, um, here's a challenge scientists face. Many things can be true at the same time, and it's very hard to digest that in the public. And so while what Mel Robbins and the neuroscientists said is accurate, an unfathomable uh, fathomable amount of neurodevelopment happens from zero to five. Tons and tons and tons of, I mean, your brain is literally growing itself. You may have heard this, yeah. but... Um, Really, the first 18 months of a kid's life is really considered the third, uh, I mean, the fourth trimester. You can't really have a trimester, but um, the, the brain's not done developing yet. Baby, uh, humans yeah. just have their babies early. And so all that to say is that's true. And genetic dispositions are true. And none of that is causal. None of that is deterministic. That's also true. And what that means is when somebody is as loving and wise as you, who's able to go, whoa, I don't like the set of train tracks I'm on. The beauty is, A, there's messages like that that get your attention. And B, there's light and hope in the next set of train tracks you put you and your family on. Yeah. So I want you to sleep well at night. Now, I'll be a totally honest with you. If you keep going the same way you've been going, absolutely. Your kid's going to reflect your... Um, angst, your rage, it, being uh, the child of an alcoholic is evil, dude. Because you're there in, per in, in body, but you're not there in person and spirit. Um, and a kid feels lost, right? So all that's true. You do nothing, yes. So I'm gonna tell you what just happened at my house, okay? This is me just being vulnerable with you. Yeah. Um, I, and it's, just, it's, it's a shameful thing for me because I do this for a living, Okay. And it's so cool to talk to people about their parents and their marriage and their kids and all that. And then I got parents and I'm married and I got kids. And so I get to live at home and see if this actually works or not. So um, I had a really gnarly interaction with my daughter. She mm -hmm. just, I'm probably gonna get choked up here. Um, I, she, she wouldn't let me tuck her in at night. She just said no. And to the point that she was screaming and crying like it was a big mess. And I was, at first I was just trying to give my wife a night off or two nights off or three nights off. And then I was like, Hey, I, I just want to hug my daughter. And she's, she's seven. She wouldn't do it. And then it became like if for, after breakfast or before she went to school, like, Hey, can I have a hug before you go to school? And she would just look at me and walk away. And then my inner Texas male was like, that's disrespectful. And I'm this, and you need to, like, mm -hmm. I'm your father. Like that, all that stuff. Right. Yeah. And I called a, a buddy of mine that's a counselor and she gave me some good wisdom. And then my wife said something that was really powerful. Um, and it reminded me back of a Gabor Mate book that I read. And that's, that's I think, one of the most important uh, books ever written about parenting. It's called Hold On To Your Kids. But here's what he says. Be likable. Be likable. And maybe yeah. your seven-year-old little girl doesn't not like her dad. In fact, she loves him deeply, but she feels that energy on his, off his, like, pulsing out of you. 
And suddenly I wrote about it in the book. I realized, oh crap, I've become old me again. I'm a nuclear reactor. I'm always hot. I'm always coming in late. I'm always flying around the place. I'm always just right on edge, right on edge, right on edge. And I'm going to tell you this, dude. Um, I went, and at the same time, I had a boss, uh, someone I work with, tell me that I'm really hard to be friends with. Not because I'm not a nice guy. I tell the truth, all that. I'm just a lot. I just overwhelm people um, all the time. So then I did something that the Texas mail and me never thought would happen. And I decided I'm going to try to be really likable. And what that meant was I had to be very peaceful. And what that meant was I had to start just changing the way I experienced the world, the way I thought about things, what I did, what I ate, how much I slept, all that stuff. Yeah. And this morning, whoo, let me get choked up. This morning, my wife had to peel my daughter off of me because we were having a hug off competition. <laughs> okay. So I want yeah. you to have peace in your soul. It can change. What you're going to want to do is come up with a program or what are the 10 steps to, and I don't think that's the map back to a kid's heart, to a non-anxious kid. What you're going to have to do is decide, I want to have a non-anxious life. I want to have a non-anxious house. That means we got to own reality. That means we got to choose freedom. We're not going to owe people money. We're not going to be like, you're going to set yourself up in a position over the next three to five years where you can quit at any time. A job, if you've got a toxic boss or a, somebody asking you to do something you don't want to do, you're going to take care of your body. Y'all are going to get connected to, to something bigger than yourself. You're going to practice mindfulness. You're going to create a non-anxious life for yourself. And yeah. your kids will become that. I believe that with all my heart. Yeah. And that's, that's what I've been working on this year or this on 2022 is, you know, trying to my best to live an unanxious life. It's, it's difficult, but it's real hard. It's real hard. Okay. I, and I know that, um, I want to challenge you on a couple of things. Okay. I'm going to give you a couple of things. I want you to try with your kid and I'm going to challenge you on a couple of things and I'm going to give you some tools. I'll put my money where my mouth is. Okay. Um, I want you with your five-year-old to start a journal with him on his bed, just go to Walgreens and buy like a crappy spiral. And it might be a picture of daddy smiling and with an over, I want you to draw like an over, like the smile extra big. No. It might be like a heart and just put it on his pillow. And his job is to write to you before he goes to school the next day and color in it or whatever that looks like. Okay. I want you to yeah. start that practice. The second one is man, really practice just being around them. Let them know that you like them. Every moment is not a teaching moment. Every second is not a life lesson. Everything is not like a, hey, you need to pick this up. Why are you doing like that? You need to dry off. Why are you doing that? Are you going to wear deodorant? Like, he's only five, I know. Yeah. But, um, it's like, just like being around your kid. Yes, there's some things you got to tell them to do, but whew, if you get angry, which you will, if you don't get angry, you should probably go see a psychiatrist because that's not normal. Um, yeah. I want you to take a knee and look your kid in the eye and say, I'm choosing anger right now. And this is not about you. And I'm sorry if I scared you. I'm not sorry that I'm angry, but I'm sorry that I scared you. But daddy's not angry at you. Okay. I want you to teach him there's a difference between your anger and him. Okay. Um, yeah. Touch him on his face every single day. Hold his face if you can. I told my kid when he was really little, I'm going to hug you every day of your life. I'm, it's going to be weird. Sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, maybe a, a secret breakfast date. Does he go to school yet? Yeah, he's in pre-K. So he gets off usually at like 11 or so. If y'all had like a... I take my son to Waffle House once a week and it's become magic time. Because it'll be nothing, 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 nothing. And then suddenly he's like, hey, dad, can we talk about something? And I've created a world where that's okay. Because it happens regularly, yeah. right? Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to send you um, a couple of things. I'm going to send you the full Financial Peace University. I work here at Ramsey Solutions to help you and your family get out of debt. Any money you owe anybody else, we're going to walk. I'm going to give you the plan to get out of debt. It's helped millions of people do it. I'm going to give it to you for free, okay? You got wow, to okay. watch your lessons and you got to do it. Is that fair? Sure. Okay. Also, I'm going to send you my buddy um, Lane Norton's Carbon app. I get no money from this. It's the app I use um, to keep track of my diet, nutrition, and it's been a, it's a it's the best there is. Okay. 
Also, I'm going to send you the newest workout from my buddies over at Mind Pump. It's their MAPS anabol- anabolic program uh, advanced. Okay. You got to get your butt yeah. back in the gym. Cool. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, and I think a great gift you could give your kid is to start going back to jujitsu classes and not doing it because I'm going to be Conor McGregor, but doing it because I want to be able to roll around with my grandkids when I'm 90. Oh yeah. And I have been, we've cool. just been in a, we've been in a weird season of life where we're in the middle of a house renovation. So it's, that's eating up all of our time. But yeah, I've been in the gym quite a bit. But. Good. Well, I'm going to send you some stuff. Okay. And, um, hang on the line here and Jenna's going to get it to you. These things I'm telling you, taking care of your body, taking care of your nutrition, taking care of your finances, taking care of your calendar, um, taking care of you, your marriage, all those things, dude, create a non-anxious household. And it lets your little boys and your second kid know, come what may, in here, I'm safe. And with that guy, I'm safe. So everybody listen and hear me. Yes, much, much, much of your neurodevelopment happens from zero to five. I think that's probably accurate. And neuroplasticity is a thing that will last with you through your lifetime. So it's never too late to reconnect with your kids. It's never too late to reconnect with your spouse. It's never too late to reconnect with your friends. It's never too late to reconnect with yourself. You can always get off the train tracks that you're on And if you have to, just start walking another direction. But you can get on another set of train tracks and head off into adventures unknown. You can always start again. Thanks for your call, my brother. We'll be right back. Hey, good folks. John Deloney here. I feel like I fell through a glitch in the Matrix. This is my job. I get to have this show, do this show, walk alongside each one of you as a career. This is what I do, and I have a blast doing it. And me and the team, we're so thankful for all of you for being a part of our show. Whether you're one of the original 17 or you're one of the millions that's come since then, we are so grateful for you, and we want to put together the best possible show that we can. So if you're one of the originals or if you're brand new, we want your feedback. Tell us what you love about the show, what you hate about the show, what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to hear more of, and what you want us to never do again. You can email us at askjohn at ramseysolutions.com. That's askjohn at ramseysolutions.com with your feedback. Thank you for being such an important part of this show. Rock on. All right, we're back. Let's go to Marie in H-Town. What's up, Marie? Um, A whole lot, but I'm hoping you can kind of <laughs> untangle it. <laughs> Let's do it. Just drop the big ball right. of yarn here right on the desk. Let's untangle it. <laughs> So I have two big issues, but it's an overarching question. So hopefully you can help me with that. Um, How do I get my partner to grow up? (laughs) (laughs) So a little background. uh, My my first issue. Is this my wife? (laughs) No. (laughs) All right, go ahead. First issue. (laughs) So the first issue is he is in his 30s and he does not have a driver's license. Oh, my. How long have you been his mom? Um, well. We have been together since about 2018, so that long. (laughs) Gross. You kiss your son? I know. I know. Gross, Marie. Here's the thing. Okay, okay. So uh, he, all these years, like especially um, we have a kid together. We um, We had our son in 2019. While I was pregnant, I kept telling him, I really need you to get your driver's license because I can't be the only parent taking him to daycare, to doctor's appointments. And he said, yeah, yeah, I'll get it. I'll do it. And he's been saying, oh yeah, I'll get my driver's license all these years. And I just, you know, and then. Have you ever played Texas Hold'em? No. Okay. It's like a, it's a poker game. Yeah. And uh, at some point somebody says, I call. Mm-hmm. And what that means is like everybody has to show their cards to see who wins. And every time you make these demands, he's like, I call and you do nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, I know. You stole him like his mommy and then y'all make out. And then he's like, his life just goes back the way it was. Ta-da. Why, why in the world? I know. Why in the world? And I'm, I'm, I'm saying this seriously. I have a smile on my face. Yeah. 
why would he get a driver's license? You do everything. I know. And you have sex with him. Yeah, like, like, there's no reason for him to do anything. He yes, He doesn't have I a know. job either, does he? No, he does have a job. Oh, he does? And okay. Yeah, that brings me to a third issue, but I wasn't going to discuss that. Bring him. That kind of ties. Let's do it okay. all. All right. So, uh, the second issue is, well, one of the issues actually wasn't the issue that I did bring it up in my email. Um, I didn't read so, your, I didn't see your email. So just tell yeah, me. No, no, I was just, I'm just trying to remember my email to help me stay okay. on track. Okay. Um, but the other issue is <laughs> we have, you know, we have a four-year-old and, you know, he is, he has extra needs. Mm-hmm. Um, he is severely autistic, like nonverbal, okay. um, very sensory seeking. He has a lot. Mm-hmm. And my partner um, works an overnight job. He has to get a new job. I, yeah, I've tried. I've tried talking to him about this, but I, it won't work with my... He has a second job um, coaching jujitsu. Yeah, that's got to um, stop. And listen, everything's got to stop. I know. I don't know how to fix it. Okay. Um, before I start talking, and I, I hate going into these waters because these waters are uncomfortable, okay? And I've been laughing, having fun with you and all that, but... I know this is very serious, okay? Yeah. Before I get into the hard part of this call, um, do you still like him? I do like him. It's okay if you don't. It's okay if you don't. No, I do like him. I enjoy our conversations. And uh, whenever I think of leaving, I just think, oh my gosh, I'm going to hurt him so bad because he's not a bad guy. Okay, that's, (laughs) you are sacrificing yourself on the altar of him. Yes. And you're sacrificing your little boy on the altar of him. Yeah. So I'm asking you, do you still like him? Or maybe you love him, but you're so enraged because this isn't how it's supposed to be. I, I care about his feelings. He doesn't care about yours. It feels like that. No, I'm telling you. (laughs) I'm telling you. I hope that he does come around to care about yours one uh, one day. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he still goes to a hobby and has figured out a way for the hobby to give him a little money so that he can call it a side job. The fact that he has not looked at the reality of your world. He has a nonverbal son. That's a very challenging world. It's challenging because there's nothing more important to a mom and dad to have that little kid say, I love you. And you haven't had that yet. No. And it's devastating. Mm-hmm. And he hadn't I had it yet. I know he loves either. me though. I, I know, I, I know, I know my son loves me though. Oh, absolutely. hundred percent. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but there's a reality to it that most people, when they hear nonverbal, they don't understand. Like it's, it's not the way it's supposed to, it hurts, it hurts. And some people lean way in and some people run from that. And I'm not saying it's the cause. Sounds like you've married a child. But all that to say is this. You care deeply about not hurting him. I would almost be willing to bet you care about not hurting him because it makes you look bad. Um, no? I, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay. Because, I mean, I've... There's I, not I a, let me to, say it this way. There's I, not I a way you... Mom- there's not a way you can save yourself and him not have to change. And when grown women are married to little boys, change feels like the end of time. The whole world's coming down. Because they've gotten their way their whole life. And so what you have, here, here's the thing. <sighs> Would you ever leave him? I was actually strongly considering it. Um, our lease is up in June. Okay. And uh, my my mom and my sister, those are the two that I actually, the only two people I can really talk to about this. They both said, just leave, just leave. And, you know, you know we'll do whatever we can to help you. And, and so I've been strongly considering leaving um, when the lease is up. And... But I don't know how, and I don't know how to break that to him. Because whenever I've mentioned these things, he turns it, he tries, he kind of turns it around on me. Like I'm somehow wrong or I'm, um, you know, like I'm um, overreacting to something. 
Mm-hmm. Like a, there's a there's an additional piece to the driver's license thing, and you're going to and you're going to hit me. <laughs> I already I, know. I won't hit you. I'm not that tough. <laughs> Tell me. So, um, he actually bought a car before we before we got together. Um, he bought it cash from his friend's mom. Oh God! And then he never registered it, and he couldn't because he didn't have a driver's license. And then fast forward, my car was in the shop. I needed to, I needed something to drive. So I said, I'll just drive your car. Except I had to go register it, but I couldn't, um, he couldn't register it because he didn't have a license. So I registered it under my name and his name. And because I'm the only licensed driver, I put insurance on it because I couldn't register it otherwise. And so now, you know, my, my car is fixed and he's driving around this car without a driver's license using my insurance. And my insurance already told me they wouldn't cover if there was an accident. And we're in an area where there are a lot of accidents all the time. And he says, well, I'm a safe driver and, you know, I won't get in an accident. I said, I'm not worried about your driving. I'm worried about the other people. I'm worried about the other people crashing into you. And then my insurance won't cover anything. And then he says, no, I'll just pay for it. It's like, no. You can't even pay the seventy five dollars a week for your half of the of the daycare. How are you going to pay? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This whole thing is a mess. It is a mess. <laughs> okay, whole thing's a mess. That's um, why I said, um, listen to me, l- listen to me carefully. And what I'm going to say is, I would not say this in an abusive situation, but I'm saying this to you, okay? So I don't want everyone okay. who's married and is in a messy situation to extrapolate their what I'm about to say to you to their world. I'm just saying this to okay. you. You are getting the world you allow. I know. Okay. And if here's what I, I want to communicate. Um, I think things are funny that my wife did not, does not think is funny. And mm-hmm. I also have a couple of ticks, like uh, not like the bugs, but like yeah. I have some like vocal ticks. And for whatever reason, whenever there's a sound, I instantly mimic it. So if there's like a thing in the drawer and it goes, I'll just be across the house and I'll be like, and it just comes out. I don't know why I wish it didn't, but it, so for the first X number of years, my wife was always saying stop or what. And then she had a realization. She's just making herself tired and miserable. Mm -hmm. This is the guy I married and I love him. He's hilarious. I wish he wouldn't make that joke at the dinner table, but most of the time he's awesome. And yeah. I think it's weird that he makes those noises, but now I think it's endearing because I, see what I'm saying? So if you're not going to leave and you love this guy, stop carrying it around because you're comparing your life to him. You're frustrated. And it's just adding to the already really difficult challenge you have of being a working mother with a autistic son, a severely autistic son, and a husband that y'all are still splitting bills with again. Very, oh, we're not legally married. That's the thing. We're not legally married. Uh, we cool, live dude. together. So. Oh, oh <laughs> my gosh. Lead with that, Marie. Move out. What are you doing? Move out. <laughs> because the lease, the lease isn't up until July. Cool. <laughs> what's your, what's your soul wanna... worth? What's your sanity worth? Um, is it worth a couple well, of months rent? If I wasn't, if I wasn't said dang poor, then <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Then um, <laughs> that's why I said if I just hold out until July, <laughs> but I don't know how to. But you know, one, I wanted to see if I could get if I could get it through to him to just grow up. He's hey, listen, so he, he's not on the phone, so I, he, I he's not on the phone, so I, we can't talk. Talking about him is not a, a good use of our time. Okay, I can only talk about you. And so, too, how do I how do I tell that to him? You probably there maybe being a whole lot of crying. The, and, zero. Get that out of out of out of your world. There will be a whole lot of crying. Period. There'll be a lot of heartbreak, a lot of the same way he's always reacted. He's going to do that again. Times more. That's really scary to me. Okay. If you're not safe, you need to leave now. He has never laid his hands on me. So I'm physically safe. I don't believe you. He's never laid his hands on me. He's gotten pretty damn close, hadn't he? No, he just yells a lot. And but the thing is, is we only fight like every once every six months. Marie. Um the last the last time was about four months ago. Marie. And what? <laughs> Why? I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know but... how to I don't know 
There's nothing wrong with <laughs> Obviously. you. Obviously. Obviously, there is because it's not... so cut and dry when I look at it from the outside. I know. You can hear well, yourself talking. Leave. Listen, yeah. Marie, <laughs> you have a picture of what you wanted this thing to look like. Yes. And I thought when I had two kids, it was going to look like this and I was going to have a partner that was in it with me. We were going to live here. We we're going to go to Astros games. We we're going to do all this stuff. And it's not. And the sooner you can choose reality and live out of that reality instead of this fantasy that you're killing yourself duct taping together with tape and string and wire and wood. You're doing whatever you can to keep this thing patched up. You got to choose reality. And I'm not even, I even think y'all can salvage this. He's going to have to make some very significant changes. What I often find in this exact moment is you have yelled at him. You have made demands in the middle of fights. You have, you've never sat down over a meal with a typed out piece of paper and said, here's what I need. And if you are choosing to not help me meet these needs, you are choosing for us to be over. I hope you don't make that choice, but that choice is yours to make. And then when the conversation starts, oh, you're just, be cool. Old Marie, you're right. This is new Marie. And this is from this day forward. I got to have help with my kid. And I know that I'm asking you to get a new job in the daytime. I am. And I'm asking you to get up in the morning and help with diapers or breakfast or whatever you need help with and dropping off at school and be a part of his life and go get your own parental ABA training so that you know how to deal with a kid who's severely autistic because it's hard. Mm -hmm. And he's probably not going to do it. He has no incentive to. Right. And I go back to the original thing, like why in the world would he do anything differently than what he's doing? Why would he get a driver's license? He has a car. But right now, right this moment, you can get off the phone and call the insurance company and cancel the insurance. But how do I get my name off of the registration then? Because I- and that's Put the, the car that's on the Craigslist. Been... It's your car. I know, I've, I've thought about that. I've told him that too. And then he called me greedy. <laughs> and I said- but I'm the one who is paying for all the stuff on this car. You don't even have a license. And then he called me greedy. And he also called me greedy when I asked for, um, you know, my half, you know, for his half of the daycare. I, he's employed full time. I'm employed part time while I'm in school. I can't. Why would he give you money? Pay. Why? I don't. I, because that was our agreed. That was our agreement. And it had been. And it had been going like that until August. And then he, and just then he decided, called your bluff. Well, he had been paying and then August happened. And I don't know what happened in August, but oh, the, the daycare costs went up and then suddenly he couldn't afford it. It's like, yeah, because I can, <laughs> you make twice as much as I do. How do you not afford it? <sighs> and then the day just goes on. Yeah. I'm heartbroken for you, Marie, because I know you're trapped. And I, I know you. it feels like you're trapped. You're not trapped, but it feels like you are. And I get that. And I also think you love this guy. You probably don't like him, but I think you love this guy. Or you love the idea of him and what y'all could have had together. What y'all might still have together. Mm -hmm. But I also hear an exhausted mother of a special needs kid and an exhausted mother who's trying to go to school and to work. And he's tired of also carrying a third kid that's now got a missile that he's unlicensed to be driving, hauling around Houston, Texas, which does not have a bunch of great drivers in it. No, no, there's, um, it's where I grew up. There's I, at least, I, I know. Yeah, there's like two to three accidents right outside of our, um, our neighborhood every day, but like all, but listen, all hours of the day. All like, of that, oh. all of that is a proxy for one thing. Is Maria going to care about, is Marie going to care about Marie the way she's trying to care for everybody else? And until you get there, you're just going to walk around frustrated because nobody's going to change because there's no reason to change. You're not going to leave. You're going to figure out how to get a couple of more shifts and pay for it. You're going to end up getting done with school and making a bunch of money. You're going to take care of the kids. Nothing's going to change. I know. And that's so awful to me. That's why I called.
Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate that it feels like nothing is going to change. And I don't, that's why I thought, how do I change it? Just one way. Take that and first. Have to leave. Take the, no, no, <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's the first step. I think the first step is doing whatever you can to, it's the same as I do with my kid. Just like I said it earlier. Okay. Just like I said it earlier. Um, here is what I need. I need a partner that wakes up with me in the morning and helps with the kid. I need a partner who um, helps with bedtime. I need a partner who will get trained and help me out. I need someone who has a plan for, are we going to get married or not? Someone who, because I want to get married so that we can create a long-term safe life together that I don't know you're not just going to take off on. All, just all and all and all and all. I need someone, sometimes I need to leave and go be with my friends because I'm working like crazy. All of those things, you got to spend some time with you writing down, here's what I need. And these are different than wants. Here's what I need. And then he gets to choose. Are you in or are you out? You've got to come up with your or what statement. I will never tell somebody to leave unless they're being abused. Okay? You've got to come up with your or what statement and you've got to own the weight of it, Marie. I won't take that from you. If he doesn't do these things or what, what are you going to do? And that's the cross you have to bear. If you want to stay, I'll be here and I'll talk you through it. If you want to go, I'll be here and I'll talk you through it. But he's got no incentive to change. Zero. None. Because you're carrying everything. As someone who spent her whole life being a peacekeeper, making sure everybody else's needs were taken care of and everybody else was happy and everybody else liked you, my hope and prayer for you is at some point you say, I'm worthy of that same love. And it has to start with me. You're worth being well, Marie. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up? Now that my new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, is out in the wild, we've been hearing reviews and feedback from readers, and wow, I'm so grateful. And one of the things I've been most excited about hearing is that this book is not just for people who are healing from terrible traumatic experience or other big scary things from their past. This book is for everyone in every walk of life. The single 30-year-old looking to sharpen their mind, the 25-year-old hoping to make new friends, the parent who's tired of seeing their kid's eyes glued to a screen, but who doesn't know how to re-enter their life, people coming out of abusive relationships, everyone. And this book isn't me talking at you. This book is me walking with you because I've been there too. To better understand and improve your mental, relational, and emotional health, please check out Own Your Past, Change Your Future at johndeloney.com today. That's johndeloney.com today. All right, as we wrap up today's show, um, man, this band is named after something that Kelly doesn't have. The band's called Heart, and the song is Magic Man. It goes like this. Cold late night so long ago, and I was not so strong, you know. A pretty man came to me, never seen eyes so blue. You know, I could not run away. It seemed we'd seen each other in a dream. It seemed like he knew me. He looked right through me. Yeah. Try to understand. I'm a magic man. Listen, if anyone tells you in a bar they're a magic man, run. Run. God almighty. We'll see you soon. Love y'all.